Jeremiah chapter 50 This is the word the Lord spoke through Jeremiah the prophet concerning Babylon and the land of the Babylonians. Announce and proclaim among the nations. Lift up a banner and proclaim it. Keep nothing back but say, Babylon will be captured. Bel will be put to shame. Marduk filled with terror. Her images will be put to shame and her idols filled with terror. A nation from the north will attack her and lay waste her land. No one will live in it. Both people and animals will flee away. In those days, at that time, declares the Lord, the people of Israel and the people of Judah together will go in tears to seek the Lord their God. They will ask the way to Zion and turn their faces towards it. They will come and bind themselves to the Lord in an everlasting covenant that will not be forgotten. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have led them astray and caused them to roam on the mountains. They wandered over mountain and hill and forgot their own resting place. Whoever found them devoured them. Their enemies said, We are not guilty, for they sinned against the Lord, their verdant pasture, the Lord, the hope of their ancestors. Flee out of Babylon, leave the land of the Babylonians, and be like the goats that lead the flock. For I will stir up and bring against Babylon an alliance of great nations from the land of the north. They will take up their positions against her, and from the north she will be captured. Their arrows will be like skilled warriors who do not return empty-handed. So Babylonia will be plundered. All who plunder her will have their fill, declares the Lord. Because you rejoice and are glad, you who pillage my inheritance, because you frolic like a heifer threshing corn and neigh like stallions, your mother will be greatly ashamed. She who gave you birth will be disgraced. She will be the least of the nations, a wilderness, a dry land, a desert. Because of the Lord's anger she will not be inhabited, but will be completely desolate. All who pass Babylon will be appalled. They will scoff because of all her wounds. Take up your positions round Babylon, all you who draw the bow. Shoot at her. Spare no arrows for she has sinned against the Lord. Shout against her on every side. She surrenders, her towers fall, her walls are torn down. Since this is the vengeance of the Lord, take vengeance on her. Do to her as she has done to others. Cut off from Babylon, the sower and the reaper with his sickle at harvest. Because of the sword of the oppressor, let everyone return to their own people. Let everyone flee to their own land. Israel is a scattered flock that lions have chased away. The first to devour them was the king of Assyria. The last to crush their bones was Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Therefore this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. I will punish the king of Babylon and his land as I punished the king of Assyria. But I will bring Israel back to their own pasture, and they will graze on Carmel and Bashan. Their appetite will be satisfied on the hills of Ephraim and Gilead. In those days, at that time, declares the Lord, search will be made for Israel's guilt, but there will be none, and for the sins of Judah, but none will be found for I will forgive the remnant I spare. Attack the land of Merathaim and those who live in Pecod. Pursue, kill, and completely destroy them, declares the Lord. Do everything I have commanded you. The noise of battle is in the land, the noise of great destruction. How broken and shattered is the hammer of the whole earth! How desolate is Babylon among the nations! I set a trap for you, Babylon, and you were caught before you knew it. You were found and captured because you opposed the Lord. The Lord has opened his arsenal 
and brought out the weapons of his wrath, for the Sovereign Lord Almighty has work to do in the land of the Babylonians. Come against her from afar, break open her granaries, pile her up like heaps of grain, completely destroy her and leave her no remnant. Kill all her young bulls, let them go down to the slaughter, woe to them for their day has come, the time for them to be punished. Listen to the fugitives and refugees from Babylon, declaring in Zion how the Lord our God has taken vengeance, vengeance for his temple. Summon archers against Babylon, all those who draw the bow. Encamp all round her, let no one escape. Repay her for her deeds, do to her as she has done. For she defied the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. Therefore, her young men will fall in the streets. All her soldiers will be silenced in that day, declares the Lord. See, I am against you, you arrogant one, declares the Lord, the Lord Almighty. For your day has come, the time for you to be punished. The arrogant one will stumble and fall, and no one will help her up. I will kindle a fire in her towns that will consume all who are around her. This is what the Lord Almighty says. The people of Israel are oppressed, and the people of Judah as well. All their captors hold them fast, refusing to let them go. Yet their Redeemer is strong. The Lord Almighty is his name. He will vigorously defend their cause, so that he may bring rest to their land, but unrest to those who live in Babylon. A sword against the Babylonians, declares the Lord against those who live in Babylon and against her officials and wise men. A sword against her false prophets. They will become fools. A sword against her warriors. They will be filled with terror. A sword against her horses and chariots and all the foreigners in her ranks. They will become weaklings. A sword against her treasures. They will be plundered. A drought on her waters they will dry up, for it is a land of idols, idols that will go mad with terror. So desert creatures and hyenas will live there, and there the owl will dwell. It will never again be inhabited or lived in from generation to generation. As I overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah along with their neighboring towns, declares the Lord, so no one will live there, no people will dwell in it. Look! An army is coming from the north, a great nation and many kings are being stirred up from the ends of the earth. They are armed with bows and spears. They are cruel and without mercy. They sound like the roaring sea as they ride on their horses. They come like men in battle formation to attack you, daughter Babylon. The king of Babylon has heard reports about them and his hands hang limp. Anguish has gripped him. Pain like that of a woman in labor, like a lion coming up from Jordan's thickets to a rich pasture land, I will chase Babylon from its land in an instant. Who is the chosen one I will appoint for this? Who is like me and who can challenge me? And what shepherd can stand against me? Therefore, hear what the Lord has planned against Babylon, what he has purposed against the land of the Babylonians. The young of their flock will be dragged away. Their pasture will be appalled at their fate. At the sound of Babylon's capture, the earth will tremble. Its cry will resound among the nations. Jeremiah chapter 51 This is what the Lord says. See. I will stir up the spirit of a destroyer against Babylon and the people of Leb Kamai. I will send foreigners to Babylon to winnow her and to devastate her land. They will oppose her on every side in the day of her disaster. Let not the archer string his bow, nor let him put on his armor. Do not spare her young men. Completely destroy her army. They will fall down, slain in Babylon fatally wounded in her streets.
for Israel and Judah have not been forsaken by their God, the Lord Almighty, though their land is full of guilt before the Holy One of Israel. Flee from Babylon, run for your lives. Do not be destroyed because of her sins. It is time for the Lord's vengeance. He will repay her what she deserves. Babylon was a gold cup in the Lord's hand. She made the whole earth drunk. The nations drank her wine, therefore they have now gone mad. Babylon will suddenly fall and be broken. Wail over her, get balm for her pain. Perhaps she can be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she cannot be healed. Let us leave her and each go to our own land, for her judgment reaches to the skies, it rises as high as the heavens. The Lord has vindicated us. Come, let us tell in Zion what the Lord our God has done. Sharpen the arrows, take up the shields. The Lord has stirred up the kings of the Medes, because his purpose is to destroy Babylon. The Lord will take vengeance, vengeance for his temple. Lift up a banner against the walls of Babylon, reinforce the guard, station the watchman, prepare an ambush. The Lord will carry out his purpose, his decree against the people of Babylon. You who live by many waters and are rich in treasures, your end has come, the time for you to be destroyed. The Lord Almighty has sworn by himself, I will surely fill you with troops as with a swarm of locusts, and they will shout in triumph over you. He made the earth by his power, he founded the world by his wisdom, and stretched out the heavens by his understanding. When he thunders, the waters in the heavens roar. He makes clouds rise from the ends of the earth. He sends lightning with the rain, and brings out the wind from his storehouses. Everyone is senseless and without knowledge. Every goldsmith is shamed by his idols. The images he makes are a fraud. They have no breath in them. They are worthless, the objects of mockery. When their judgment comes, they will perish. He who is the portion of Jacob is not like these, for he is the maker of all things, including the people of his inheritance. The Lord Almighty is his name. You are my war club, my weapon for battle. With you I shatter nations, with you I destroy kingdoms, with you I shatter horse and rider, with you I shatter chariot and driver, with you I shatter man and woman, with you I shatter old man and youth, with you I shatter young man and young woman, with you I shatter shepherd and flock, with you I shatter farmer and oxen, with you I shatter governors and officials. Before your eyes, I will repay Babylon and all who live in Babylonia for all the wrong they have done in Zion, declares the Lord. I am against you, you destroying mountain, you who destroy the whole earth, declares the Lord. I will stretch out my hand against you, roll you off the cliffs, and make you a burnt-out mountain. No rock will be taken from you for a cornerstone, nor any stone for a foundation. For you will be desolate for ever, declares the Lord. Lift up a banner in the land. Blow the trumpet among the nations. Prepare the nations for battle against her. Summon against her these kingdoms, Ararat, Minai, and Ashkenaz. Appoint a commander against her. Send up horses like a swarm of locusts. Prepare the nations for battle against her, the kings of the Medes, their governors and all their officials, and all their countries they rule. The land trembles and writhes, for the Lord's purposes against Babylon stand, to lay waste the land of Babylon so that no one will live there. Babylon's warriors have stopped fighting, they remain in their strongholds. Their strength is exhausted. They have become weaklings. Her dwellings are set on fire. The bars of her gates are broken. 
one courier follows another, and messenger follows messenger to announce to the king of Babylon that his entire city is captured, the river crossings seized, the marshes set on fire, and the soldiers terrified. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Daughter Babylon is like a threshing floor at the time it is trampled. The time to harvest her will soon come. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, has devoured us. He has thrown us into confusion. He has made us an empty jar. Like a serpent, he has swallowed us and filled his stomach with our delicacies and then has spewed us out. May the violence done to our flesh be on Babylon, say the inhabitants of Zion. May our blood be on those who live in Babylonia, says Jerusalem. Therefore this is what the Lord says. See, I will defend your cause and avenge you. I will dry up her sea and make her springs dry. Babylon will be a heap of ruins, a haunt of jackals, an object of horror and scorn, a place where no one lives. Her people all roar like young lions, they growl like lion cubs. But while they are aroused, I will set out a feast for them and make them drunk, so that they shout with laughter, then sleep forever and not awake, declares the Lord. I will bring them down like lambs to the slaughter, like rams and goats. How Shishak will be captured, the boast of the whole earth seized. How desolate Babylon will be among the nations. The sea will rise over Babylon, its roaring waves will cover her. Her towns will be desolate, a dry and desert land, a land where no one lives, through which no one travels. I will punish Bel in Babylon, and make him spew out what he has swallowed. The nations will no longer stream to him, and the wall of Babylon will fall. Come out of her, my people. Run for your lives. Run from the fierce anger of the Lord. Do not lose heart or be afraid when rumors are heard in the land. One rumor comes this year, another the next. Rumors of violence in the land and of ruler against ruler. For the time will surely come when I will punish the idols of Babylon. Her whole land will be disgraced and her slain will all lie fallen within her. Then heaven and earth and all that is in them will shout for joy over Babylon. For out of the north destroyers will attack her declares the Lord. Babylon must fall because of Israel's slain, just as the slain in all the earth have fallen because of Babylon. You who have escaped the sword, leave and do not linger. Remember the Lord in a distant land and call to mind Jerusalem. We are disgraced. For we have been insulted and shame covers our faces because foreigners have entered the holy places of the Lord's house. But days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will punish her idols and throughout her land the wounded will groan. Even if Babylon ascends to the heavens and fortifies her lofty stronghold, I will send destroyers against her declares the Lord. The sound of a cry comes from Babylon, the sound of great destruction from the land of the Babylonians. The Lord will destroy Babylon. He will silence her noisy din. Waves of enemies will rage like great waters. The roar of their voices will resound. A destroyer will come against Babylon. Her warriors will be captured and their bows will be broken. For the Lord is a God of retribution. He will repay in full. I will make her officials and wise men drunk, her governors, officers, and warriors as well. They will sleep forever and not awake, declares the King, whose name is the Lord Almighty.
This is what the Lord Almighty says. Babylon's thick wall will be leveled, and her high gates set on fire. The peoples exhaust themselves for nothing. The nation's labor is only fuel for the flames. This is the message Jeremiah the prophet gave to the staff officer Siriah, son of Neriah, the son of Maasiah, when he went to Babylon with Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the fourth year of his reign. Jeremiah had written on a scroll about all the disasters that would come upon Babylon, all that had been recorded concerning Babylon. He said to Siriah, When you get to Babylon, see that you read all these words aloud. Then say, Lord, you have said you will destroy this place, so that neither people nor animals will live in it. It will be desolate for ever. When you finish reading this scroll, tie a stone to it and throw it into the Euphrates. Then say, So will Babylon sink, to rise no more, because of the disaster I will bring on her, and her people will fall. The words of Jeremiah end here. One Peter. One Peter, Chapter One. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect, exiles scattered throughout the provinces of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit to be obedient to Jesus Christ and sprinkled with his blood, grace and peace be yours in abundance. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy, for you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you searched intently and with the greatest care, trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of the Messiah and the glories that would follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you, when they spoke of the things that have now been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Even angels long to look into these things. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, Be holy, because I am holy. Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him 
You believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him, and so your faith and hope are in God. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. For all people are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. Psalm 104 Praise the Lord, my soul. Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. The Lord wraps himself in light as with a garment. He stretches out the heavens like a tent and lays the beams of his upper chambers on their waters. He makes the clouds his chariot and rides on the wings of the wind. He makes winds his messengers, flames of fire his servants. He set the earth on its foundations. It can never be moved. You covered it with the watery depths as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. But at your rebuke the waters fled. At the sound of your thunder they took flight. They flowed over the mountains. They went down into the valleys to the place you assigned for them. You set a boundary they cannot cross. Never again will they cover the earth. He makes springs pour water into the ravines. It flows between the mountains. They give water to all the beasts of the field. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. The birds of the sky nest by the waters. They sing among the branches. He waters the mountains from his upper chambers. The land is satisfied by the fruit of his work. He makes grass grow for the cattle and plants for people to cultivate, bringing forth food from the earth. Wine that gladdens human hearts, oil to make their faces shine, and bread that sustains their hearts. The trees of the Lord are well watered, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. There the birds make their nests, the stork has its home in the junipers. The high mountains belong to the wild goats. The crags are a refuge for the hyrax. He made the moon to mark the seasons, and the sun knows when to go down. You bring darkness, it becomes night, and all the beasts of the forest prowl. The lions roar for their prey and seek their food from God. The sun rises, and they steal away. They return and lie down in their dens. Then people go out to their work, to their labor, until evening. How many are your works, Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is the sea, vast and spacious, teeming with creatures beyond number, living things, both large and small. There the ships go to and fro, and Leviathan, which you formed to frolic there. All creatures look to you to give them their food at the proper time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. When you send your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He who looks at the earth and it trembles, he who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. 
May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. But may sinners vanish from the earth and the wicked be no more. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord. Proverbs chapter 22 A good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. Rich and poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them all. The prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and pay the penalty. Humility is the fear of the Lord. Its wages are riches and honour and life. In the paths of the wicked are snares and pitfalls, but those who would preserve their life stay far from them. Start children off on the way they should go, and even when they are old they will not turn from it. The rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is slave to the lender. Whoever sows injustice reaps calamity, and the rod they wield in fury will be broken. The generous will themselves be blessed, for they share their food with the poor. Drive out the mocker, and out goes strife. Quarrels and insults are ended. One who loves a pure heart, and who speaks with grace, will have the king for a friend. The eyes of the Lord keep watch over knowledge, but he frustrates the words of the unfaithful. The sluggard says, There's a lion outside. I'll be killed in the public square. The mouth of an adulterous woman is a deep pit. A man who is under the Lord's wrath falls into it. Folly is bound up in the heart of a child, but the rod of discipline will drive it far away. One who oppresses the poor to increase his wealth, and one who gives gifts to the rich, both come to poverty. Thirty Sayings of the Wise Saying 1. Pay attention and turn your ear to the sayings of the wise. Apply your heart to what I teach, for it is pleasing when you keep them in your heart and have all of them ready on your lips. So that your trust may be in the Lord, I teach you today, even you. Have I not written thirty sayings for you, sayings of counsel and knowledge, teaching you to be honest and to speak the truth, so that you bring back truthful reports to those you serve? Saying 2. Do not exploit the poor because they are poor, and do not crush the needy in court. For the Lord will take up their case and will exact life for life. Saying 3. Do not make friends with a hot-tempered person. Do not associate with one easily angered, or you may learn their ways and get yourself ensnared. Saying 4. Do not be one who shakes hands in pledge or puts up security for debts. If you lack the means to pay, your very bed will be snatched from under you. Saying 5. Do not move an ancient boundary stone set up by your ancestors. Saying 6. Do you see someone skilled in their work? They will serve before kings. They will not serve before officials of low rank.